hers out there for everybody. All right, let's get one more section of this ready. Ready, Aaron? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's those numbers we had a minute ago. What are we doing? Um, I was showing how to solve the problem. Can I show them how to solve the problem? Can I help you? I don't know if you can help me. You're only in kindergarten. Can you help? Yes. All right. So two k plus three is equal to four k minus seven. Aria, how would you solve that problem? What would you do next to solve that? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. You're supposed to know what that means. You're in honors, honors math one. Come on what now. What does that mean? You probably add seven to both sides, right? Three plus seven? Is ten. Good. You got it right. Well done. Uh, you also subtract the 2K. What's 4K minus 2K? Oh, my gosh. All right. You keep going, you get K equals. Oh, my gosh. You get K equals 5. Hopefully, you got that as an answer. Uh, if you plug that back in, uh, this side should be 15. Uh, 10 plus 3 is 13. Hopefully, you got both of those. Yes. 13. If these are the same, 13 has to also be 13 here. So, this is, in fact, an isosceles triangle. Without those little marks, it's hard to get. 15, 13, 13. Here's the other key. You want to find the angles. If you didn't do that, um, you have to know this one. And if I was in class, I'd say, what's the measure of this in terms of W? Well, if this was 3W and that was 4W, this one would have to be the same as the bottom one. I'm not saying this is drawn to scale. As you know, I can't draw to scale most of the time. Uh, but you do know that those W's, that wouldn't 3W, 3W, five. 4W has to add up. That wouldn't be 5W. So what's 4W plus 3W and 3? What's 3 plus 3 plus 3? What's 3 plus 3 and 4? Ten. Ten. See that? She got it. Well done. She's on her way. All right. And then, of course, you divide. You get 18 for W. Plug it back in. Three times Three times 18? 54. 54. She got it right. Well done. Child prodigy here. So hopefully you got 54. That one's also 54. The remaining one up top should have been. You like that? What are you laughing at? That's I made that. Don't make fun of my drawing. All right, let's check the other one. So you got all these numbers here. Um, yep. You could have quickly added these together and realized, holy cow, this is also an isosceles triangle. That missing angle is also 50. Uh, the angle over here, which I'd ask in class, what kind of angles are these? And somebody yelled, vertical angles, and they get it right. That one's also 50. Um, certainly, you know, you do some mental math to get the remaining angles here. They're the same on there. So 50 plus X plus X is 180. Gives you 65 for those two. Beautiful quadratic here. I'm sure you love solving this. If, careful, careful, back up. If these, no, uh, okay, you can write on that. If these two are equal, it means those two sides are equal, and you can solve that. Oh, wonderful quadratic. Quadratic is back. Um, there should have been two answers, I believe, in terms of the solving. The positive three and positive five, if you plug them in, they both work. So there's no scale on this drawing. What it's saying is this thing could be scaled bigger or smaller. Um, and there could be two potential side lengths. So if you use three and if you use five, you get different lengths on here. In other words, it's really small or it's really big. This could be nine and nine. And I have a six here for some reason. I think I used to give a number, a value for this. Um, it also, oh, there it is. Uh, I forgot to show that to you before. Maybe, maybe that would have been, if that was two Y, this would be six. And then, or they could plug in a five. 40 minus 15, 5 squared, 25, and that will be 10. So two possible combinations. They both work just based on the scale. Hey, uh, young lady, hold on a second. So this, all the information was in this one. If you haven't tried it already, pause the video. I already do this. Pause the video. Pause the video. Good. And try this on your own. Mm -hmm. Look at the camera when you're saying that. And pause the video on your own. Well done. Um, while you're trying that one, um, I'm going to give you some info for the next one here. Uh, just so you can go through and get two of these out in one. Uh, here's the numbers you need. I think on your paper this is a five-step proof. Let me check my test work here, are you? Yeah, a little proof on the back. Just to give you a hint, it can be done in five steps. My five steps might be different than yours. Maybe you're smarter you do it four. Um, this is what it looks like. And you got P, B, this is for what peanut it looks butter, like. M, T, and W. 
uh, one, two, and three are going to be used in there. I think you know on your paper it says that the given is MW is equal to TW. This is what it looks like. And you're trying to prove that angle three equals angle. Say it loud. Two. There you go. Try both of those. Like I said, pause it, come back, and we'll uh, revisit here in a moment. So, are we keep going? Well, we're going to leave in a minute. I need, to, I need to get these problems done. Once they're done. And what are you going to do next? But I'm going to show them how to do these. Can you show them how to do them? No, no. Can you do the hospital uh, Not right thing? now. Not yet. Um, so, hopefully you read through this and you knew he what has vertex his angle means. headband mean. on. They can see me in the camera. They can see what I'm doing. Here. We'll show you in the end. Uh, but hopefully, if it helps you make a sketch, that's yeah. certainly something you could do. But hopefully you read vertex angle. That means that's the oddball one. Uh, base angle means there's two of those. That's one potential drawing you could make. You love fractions, right? Do you love fractions? Mm hmm You love fractions. Add all your fractions together. you got tons of algebraic options here. I can't here. Uh, <laughs> That's the wrong answer. Um, you can clear all the fractions. You can move that over. I mean, you got lots of options. Yeah. You can combine like terms. Four plus four? Eight. Eight. So you got eight fifths here plus two thirds. Are you eight fifths plus two thirds? Gosh, um, she got work to do here. Kindergarten, kindergarten homeschooling is not working out very good. <laughs> so that's another funny, potential option that's funny. <laughs> is you could get yeah. like terms on there. Get them all in the fifteenths. Twelve plus twelve plus ten. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. There you go. Well done. And then you know work it out from there. You might have noticed that thirty-four goes into one seventy evenly. Do some cross multiplying. Hopefully, you know, algebraically use your honors skills to solve that. Get seventy five for x. This didn't ask you to find x though. Keep that in mind. This asked you to, to identify whether it's acute, obtuse, or right. So using that vocab from the previous section, to figure out what type of triangle it is. Uh, Two thirds of seventy five is fifty. So I mean, this is a sixty degree angle. Four fifths of seventy five. I would take seventy five and divide it by five. It's fifteen. 15 times 4 is an hour. That's 60. So it turns out this drawing is not to scale. They'd all be 60 degrees, which makes this thing an acute triangle, also makes it equiangular, also makes it equilateral, also makes it uh, isosceles, technically. So hopefully that made sense. Um, your proof business, like I said, you could have done this in less than four steps. There's nothing wrong with that. Or less than five steps, I should say. Um, I think it's possible. You have to state the given. I noticed on the quiz you did a while ago, some of you would skip stating the givens. It's only part of the proof if you put it in there. Um, this is not a part of the proof. This is part of what I'm presenting as a problem. Your solution is the proof on there. Now, if I was in class, I'd say, well, if MW equals TW, what's the next logical conclusion? When you read that and look at the drawing, hopefully you'll look and go, well, if MW is the same as TW, this is an isosceles triangle, and these two angles have to be equal. Uh, and the reason for that is the theorem we showed at the top of the uh, top of the hour here, that isosceles triangle theorem. You know the sides are equal. You know the angles all across them are equal. There's another thing you had to recognize in the drawing, of course, is that one and three are the same due to vertical angles being congruent. And these could all be congruent signs. If you wanted to have these be congruent, said there's nothing wrong with that. Perfectly fine to show it that way as well. If these are both equal to the same thing, they have to be equal to each other. Um, and again, you could make that a congruent sign if you wanted to. Classic example of transitive property. We certainly could call it substitution. Um, just to review it, I added a fifth step in there. You can see what I did. And if you remember, what's it called when you switch the equation around? That's called a symmetric property. Certainly, you don't have to have that if you set it up you know, exactly like that at the end. Um, I just want to make sure I get every chance I can to review key terms on there. Homework for this one should be pretty easy. Um, just to reiterate, you know, pace yourself. We're only doing a couple lessons a week, um, a few here and there. Uh, we're not trying to get everything done at the same time in here. There's no benefit to trying to do this all in one day. Um, I'll try to post these videos from time to time. Um, stay safe, you know, improvise if you have to, you know, keep yourself protected. Adios. Adios. I speak Spanish.